hi and welcome back to my channel i'm starting the video today with the main images or with parts of the main images using brushes and here i'm using the moss green the alizarin crimson and gumbosh and i also have a few more pairs um i can't read it because my screen is so small but i will write the pairs i'm using in the video description so you know exactly which colors I've used and I'm starting uh, with this trio here and I'm using the Canson mixed media paper combined with my new sketchy leaves stencil I'm spritzing uh, water through the stencil this is something you have to experiment a little bit with how much water you need it should be enough to fill the whole um, image but it might not be too much because then it will not be a crisp image um, so it's, this is something you have to experiment a little bit with I re removed the stencil and immediately sprinkled the brushes into the water and this creates some beautiful botanical images that I can then cut out and use on my artwork I carefully put this aside and let it dry and in the meantime I'm going to make some more. I don't know which one I will use on my project today but it's always nice to have something um, ready to go for future projects so I don't mind if I have too many. Um, by the way this is how I'm using the brushes. I poked a hole into the lid and I close it with a pin needle and I have, I think I have um, printed the brush show, brush show, uh, lids on a sticker sheet but I can't remember, it's years ago where I got this from and then I adhered it to the lids so I know the color that it has. Maybe it's available on the Colorcraft website, I don't know, I tried to find it um, but I'm not sure if this is still available. Um, now I'm using the other pair of colors. Um, I don't have in mind which ones they are. It might be the gray and the... Oh, some kind of a matter red, but I don't know the name now. Um, you will find it in the video description. And I'm just doing the same technique. I like to experiment with different color combos um, because sometimes it's really interesting which results you get and sometimes you find new color pairs that you like. I will let this dry as well. There is some powder left over on the paper but you have to wait until everything is dry until you get rid of that and I will show you a fun way to also use this powder and net, not throw it away. In between I'm drying the stencil so that I don't get water on the paper um, and that makes sure that I get a very crisp image. And again I'm doing the same technique. What I did is um, I switched the direction of the stencil so I turned it around so I have different uh, leaves. Well, some are looking to the right and some are looking to the left side. Um, I can't remember which color pair I'm having here. It could be the leaf green combined with a burnt sienna, maybe. Um, yes, as I said, it's a bit of an experiment which colors I am using. What I love about the brushes is that they have several pigments in one color. Well, it's not, if you have a brown, it's not a brown 
it's a mixture of different colors that would mix a brown if you mix everything up um, completely and that's the nice thing I think here I've added some of the alyssum crimson um, and that's the nice thing about the brushes when they dissolve the, each pigment is separated and it mixes a little bit but not a hundred percent and that gives you this big variety of color shades I'm doing one last uh, set of images and here I have a bigger piece of paper so I decided to make the whole stencil so I have the other two images as well for future projects. I will now let everything dry completely and then I will get rid of the extra powder and therefore I've just picked a tag, I think it's a watercolor tag and I just um, sprinkle that leftover powder onto this tag. Of course um, there is a risk that you will create mud because you mix everything. Um, you probably could um, yeah pick different tags and then look where you have which pigment so that everything mixes well um, but I think I will just experiment and try that out and if it's not nice I would just uh, use it for die cutting or something like that. Um, what's important that you don't add too much water because then everything will blend completely so I just We'll set this aside and let it dry. I will now start my art journal page and I'm using some kind of vintagey papers. This time I have old book papers and also some um, scrapbooking papers with vintage images. Um, and I'm gluing them down with my glue stick. I will speed up this part a little bit because it's not, not something uh, special and it's just gluing down bits and pieces of paper. To seal everything I'm covering the whole spread with a layer of clear gesso. Um, I mentioned it a ton of times that I love the clear gesso. It's the perfect medium for your art journal I would say. And today I want to go in with brushes as the color on the background. And therefore they, uh, the gesso is absolutely perfect. Also for watercolors it's just gorgeous. I'm using that scraper tool from Princeton and I'm just pressing down um, the papers again and I'm removing the extra amount of gesso that was on my pages. For my next step I pick the stencil again. The gesso is so thin that it's almost dry and I don't mind that it's not 100% dry at this stage. And I'm going in with black acrylic paint and a makeup sponge 
and I carefully fill in the stencil. Um, don't overload your sponge with paint because then the paint will run under your stencil and you won't get a good impression. I will let this dry and then I will go in and add some color with the brush shows. Before I'm doing that I wanted to show you the tag I've made with the leftover powder. I think it's quite pretty and it, this technique could be used for so many different projects, for cards or for art journal, collage photo things. I will now sprinkle some of the brushes onto my page and I'm using um, the same colors that I've used for one of the leaf sets I've created before. I really like to have uh, the same colors on the background that I also use for my focal images because that makes look everything more cohesive. And I'm just blending in the powders with my brush and some water. You don't need much because they are very highly pigmented and very intense. And that's what I love about the brushes um, in an art journal. They are, they don't dull down like watercolors would do. Um, the cons might be that they would bleed through when you play with them directly on the page if the paper is not thick enough. Um, but with the collage and the layer of gesso, this won't happen. Here I'm using the white brushes. It's a, an opaque pigment. It's not very opaque. Um, there are whites out there, um, for example, the Art Graph white, which is much more um, opaque and white <laughs> than this. But I really like it here to just dull down the background a bit. So it just covers the background and it gets a bit lighter in some areas. And that gives the background more variety um, because it blends a bit more into the page.
I let my background dry and I will create now even more focal images with our new textured birds number two. Um, I'm stamping them onto the Canson mixed media paper and I speed this up because um, it's just stamping. I'm using the Versafine clear ink and it's waterproof once it's dry and I have re-inked it just a few days ago and it's very inky and squishy I would say. Um, important is don't press too much onto your stamp because if you press too much with a heavily inked stamp pad you will get a very thick line and it will not be a crisp line. If you have a fully inked stamp pad which I recommend you don't need to press that much. I would just recommend pressing those areas a bit more heavily um, which are more textured, which have more than just an outline. Um, I always have to remind myself not to press down too much. And also if you have such an inky uh, stamp pad, it might be necessary to clean the stamp in between your stamping uh, stamping process. So the ink that runs on the, onto the side of the stencil of the stamp will be removed before you make the next stamp impression. And here I'm coloring in one of the birdies with the brushes as well. This is not the one I'm going to use on the page because I decide to go with another one that I have also colored at this day, but I haven't recorded it. But so you can see how I'm working. I just wet the area that I want to color and then I sprinkle in some brushes carefully. Before I add color to the rest of the bird, I dry it so that my paint does not bleed um, into the other areas. And I'm just using a greenish color for the rest of the bird. My art journal page is now completely dry and I have cut out all the images, the leaves that I made, the birdies I've colored in. And now this is the fun part. I'm going to arrange them to my page to see what I like and which colors I want to use. 
and if I need some more uh, texture on the background. I am now going to make some marks with a Neo Color Crayon because I just thought this might be pretty in the background. It brings in a bit of a different texture, but I think it's not absolutely necessary. You could just um, do this without the Neo Color. But I think it's always a bit more interesting if, you, you, if you're using different mediums. But of course, sometimes you don't have that many different mediums, especially when you are a beginner and you're just starting out with art journaling. Um, but with the, with the clear gesso on the page, you could also use a usual colored pencil to make some marks. Um, on the background because it's a bit gritty and it will take the pigment of the pencil quite well. I'm also using a orange because the orange is on the leaves and I make some tinier marks all over the page. So everything is a little bit cohesive. I'm now going to adhere the leaves. I just speed this process up because it's just adhering the images and for my final step or almost my final step. I'm just looking which bird I want to use. I really like this one, but I didn't want to cover up the leaves um, so so big. <laughs> so I decided to use that smaller bird. And this one is just looking in the wrong direction. And I think it does not fit onto the right side of the page. Um, so I finally picked that small cute birdie and I set it at the bottom underneath the leaves. I am missing something on the top right corner and I thought about adhering a part of that leaf to the top right and as I see this on camera it I think it would have been possible to adhere this but whilst I was creating this page, I thought it is a bit too heavy, too much. And so I decided just to go in with that orange again and make some more marks to this corner. I finished this page up with a little sentiment that I made with the Mix a Sentiment stamp set. And there, yeah, that was everything I did. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope we will see us next time. Bye!